Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and today I want to show you a little effect that I did a couple of weeks ago when I had to show a lot of images in a sequence and I didn't want it to look too dull and so, so I did something that looked a little like this. So it's kind of like a slideshow of stacked photos that rotate and become smaller with time. And I think that looks pretty neat and I'll show you how to do it. It's actually pretty simple. Now, uh, at work I, I, I use the, uh, the Avid Pen and Zoom effect to import the photos, but we'll, we'll do it the easy way and just import the images. And if you import your images, don't forget to set the options. If it's a plain old image, you know, photo or something that has not been resized for, you know, TV, then use the resize image to fit format raster option here. Now I've already imported the three images and I've also already, you know, put in the music and edited the, the images on top of each other. Each image does have to have its own video track because you can see them, you know, stacking up. Now, to create the effect is actually pretty simple. Go to Tools, Effect Palette, Blend, and use the 3D Warp. Go to the Effect Mode. And the first thing we're gonna do is crop the image because now the image actually consists of the photo and the black borders on the left and the right and we don't want that so crop it on the left until it doesn't affect the photo and on the right the same thing okay also, we can create the border, uh, create a white one with like 20. Now, if we hadn't cropped it, the border would have been around here and that wouldn't have looked so nice, would it? So now we have the photo frame and in the version that I we have at work, I couldn't actually use the 3D Warps border because when I rotated the images, the anti-aliasing of the border was not there actually. And it looked horrible, so I had to uh, create the frame using a paint effect. Um, but, you know, in this version it looks pretty nice. So, you know, feel free to use the border. Saves you a lot of hassle. All right, now go like three frames into into the effect and set a keyframe and then go to the first keyframe and scale the image all the way up. Open the rotation tab and set the rotation to minus 10 or something like that, whatever you like best. Go to the second keyframe that the scaling to something like 95% or something. The rotation to minus three. So it nicely rotates in there. And now we'll have to get to the last keyframe. Set the scaling to like 80. Oh, it's even say 75. And the rotation to maybe eight. So over time it will rotate pretty heavily. Okay, now actually the animation for the first photo is done, but we'll have to do something else. Because we can actually use the same effect for the last photo, 
because it's actually got you know the same dimensions and everything and should animate just pretty much the same way the first one does but of course the last clip is severely shorter so if we would just drag the effect onto the third photo it would rotate very very quickly because by default the keyframes are elastic so it would do the whole rotation that the first photo does in like 15 seconds it would do in like seven seconds and that would make it a very very quick rotation <laughs> and we we don't want that now wouldn't it be nice to use the effect and have the keyframes not be elastic that would be great wouldn't it and it's absolutely possible using advanced keyframes so just promote the effect to advanced keyframes gives you a lot more control but actually everything that we want to do right now is go to the top here right click and say fixed instead of elastic that will mean that the speed of the rotation and the scaling will be exactly the same wherever you apply the effect so now we can use the effect on the last photo. And actually we'll also use it for the second photo. <laughs> it looks kind of crap though, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> we'll of course have to adjust for the portrait mode of that photo. So we have to crop differently. Crop left crop right and also we want the second photo to rotate the other way around so not clockwise but counterclockwise so we'll have to adjust all the rotation values so let's go to the first keyframe go to rotation well let's just scale that a bit go to rotation there you go not use minus 10, but 10. Here, three. And the very last keyframe, that is actually after the end of our sequence. Let's go to minus eight. And believe it or not, that could be it. Problem is that the last photo is so big that you actually can't see anything of the other two. <laughs> that's, that's not so nice. So let's adjust that. Go to scaling and say it's gonna be 85 at the beginning and at the end of its lifetime, it should be not 75, but 65. And let's also have it rotate with a kind of a little different speed. So there we go. Very nice. So I hope you like that and you can use it sometime. <laughs> Otherwise, sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching the, this episode of the Evid Screencast. And if you like, subscribe to the podcast at evidscreencast.com or in the iTunes store. If you have any comments or suggestions, just drop me a line at mail at evidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. Any mail is greatly appreciated, even if it's for penis enlargement products. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, where I will not t tweet about penis enlargement products. Um, at twitter.com slash screencast and also f uh, follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash screencast. If you'd like to see what kinds of things I do professionally, nothing to do with penis enlargement, trust me, uh, check out editguy.de. This is where I promote myself. All right. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.